Hey everyone, it's Alex. Uh, trying something a little different tonight with a video of just the stuff that I do to my drums inside the box or in the software. Here I'm using Ableton Live. So I've got a session pulled up that I recorded a little while ago just on a drum, tape, uh, drum template set that I have on here. So what we're looking for tonight is how to create fake room mics. If you don't have room mics, or in the case of myself, um, you have them, but they don't sound as good as this does, so you just do this instead. Um, so as you can see here, I've got several tracks of drums, stereo overheads, kick in and out, snare top and bottom, and then two toms. So if we play it just kind of dry without the room mics on, this is what it sounds like. Not too bad, but this is what it sounds like with the rooms. That's a little more depth to it. Um, these are fun too because your drum room mics typically give a better sense of the size of the recording, I guess, for lack of better terminology there. Um, it gives it a little bit more, I guess, perception in your brain of how the drums actually sound because if you just listen to like a direct mic for the snare for example like it sounds very unnatural you just basically it's the equivalent of you putting your ear like an inch and a half away from a snare drum and you're not hearing any of the, the reverb or the tone of the room so by listening to the rooms like this, turn this up, it gives your ear a little better kind of reference point to sounding natural so in order to create this Basically what I do is I create an auxiliary track and then you can kind of make your own rooms. You can feed in however much of a signal you want going into this room. So the disadvantage with room mics is that if you record with actual room mics and then you're listening back to it when you're mixing it and suddenly you find out that the snare is just you know, non-existent in the, the room mics because of the way you place the room or the kick drum is super loud, there's not really a good way to fix that, at least not an easy way. So the advantage of this method is that it allows you a little better control over that. If you say, yeah, I need less snare in my room mic, it's like, well, take it out entirely. And you're just hearing it from there. So basically what I'm doing, and what I like to do, is I start with all the sends at zero. Um, and then with this, it's important also to put these sends as pre-fader which normally you wouldn't want to do on an auxiliary send, but in this case, since I'm just going to treat this as an additional audio track, basically, uh, we don't want to have this where I pull the fader down and it's also going to affect the room mic. So I want complete control over the room mic, and then you can always kind of tweak it if need be later on with the aux sense here. So if I solo the room mic, or the room track, what I'm going to do is slowly create a kind of virtual picture of what I would think a drum room would sound like. I think that sounds pretty decent. I'm gonna loop a section of toms here. That to me sounds pretty decent. Um, if you were to close your eyes and listen to this, it pretty much sounds like you were you know, in the room with the drum set. So now that we've got that created, you can put it back in with the rest of the mix go ahead and fade that in or out or mix it over there. Uh, now a cool thing with this plugin, uh, it's the Universal Audio Ocean Way Studios. It's really cool because it's kind of the equivalent of if you're reamping a guitar, this is basically reamping an instrument or anything kind of like that. So you're sticking it in a room, in this case it's the Ocean Way Studios room one or room A I guess. And you can even change this around too for different sounds. They all have their own kind of unique sound and their dimensions that you can kind of check out here. So I usually just go with the default kind of drums one. 
This is the medium mic, medium distance mic. You can always change these as well. So if I crank this up, you can kind of hear with the rooms louder, you start getting a little bit more of a kind of flam on each of the kick drum hits. It's a little more noticeable than like the snare and the toms. So you can correct that in a few different ways. I'll usually move this mic a little closer. To the closer proximity changes the free delay of it. You can't really edit when it's in re-mic mode like this. Uh, or you can also just go to this mic, which is a you know, smaller distance mic, as if this was, in this case, two feet in front of it. So what I'll usually do as well uh, is typically do like a low pass shelf on these. And what that does is simulates the room, <clears throat> the room a little better because rooms are typically pretty dark. And then another trick, depending on the mix that you're doing, so like if I'm doing like a faster, heavier song, I'll usually change this microphone to a cardioid pattern. That way it's not picking up the reflections all around the room microphone, it's just basically a point A to point B kind of capture there. And with this one, you can hear it a little better in context with this. So that's cardioid. This is Omni. So Omni, you definitely get more of the room sound of it, which that could be cool if you're going for a slower song, more ballad or you just really want a you know, huge sounding kit. But if you're doing more of a busy pattern, kind of like what you're hearing now, Sometimes cardioid can work great because with this one you can still get that sense of distance, but it's not picking up the reflections behind the fake microphone. Uh, so you've got a little bit more of the direct sound and the balance on there. So again, with this, this is the Universal Audio Oceanway Studios. Uh, I like this one because it's, I think it's the only plugin that really can do this. At least the only one that I've heard that does it this well. Uh, you can also use a reverb it is a little different sounding so if we pull up like you know waves R verb which is pretty popular and put it on a basic room setting it still sounds cool but that's to me at least this this does not sound like you're standing in a room with a drummer so that's certainly usable but I would probably use this more in the sense of a traditional aux send where I'd have it post fader and use this maybe as like you know a snare reverb or something so it doesn't do you know, room emulation, I think, quite as well. And an alternative to this as well is you can also use this Oceanway Studios as a reverb, which now it sounds a little more like the Waves one um, in the sense that you're not hearing the direct source. You're hearing just more of the reflections and the reverberations. But the remic mode is cool because it kind of takes the signal that you're putting into the plugin and encapsulates it word encapsulates it uh, inside the studio in this case these ocean way ones so it's a pretty cool trick I use um, with a lot of my mixes really they don't have too much rooms in them I usually keep it somewhere like negative 6 dB to sometimes negative 12 or 15 depending on what the songs calling for uh, but it is cool to have there just because with and without it does add a little bit more sense of space to it and add can add a bit more that natural echo and decay to the drums, especially like your snare drum and things like that. So that's pretty much it for this episode. I'm going to be making a few more of these, kind of going over a few different ways that I use this plugin as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.